I'm Glenn Shea, the pastor of Tabernacle United Methodist Church, also known as Irma Tabernacle. Irma Tabernacle is loca located at the corner of Seashore and Tabernacle Roads in Irma, New Jersey. It's part of Lower Township, just on the northern edge of popular and scenic Cape May City at the bottom of the state. More information about our worship times, ministry opportunities, uh, mission activities available at our church website, www. Dot Irma Tabernacle dot org. That's Irma E R M A Irma Tabernacle dot O R G. Our scriptures for this message is in the Old Testament, Psalm one hundred and three, verses eight through fourteen. That's one hundred and third Psalm, verses eight through fourteen. And our core uh, passage for uh, this message and the series, James chapter five, verses seven through twelve. Again, the fifth chapter of James, verses 7 through 12, as we are in message number six in the Desert Fountains series, as we go through the book letter epistle of James. The title of this message is called The Present Future. The Present Future. Well, the first half of James chapter five focuses upon some pretty sensitive stuff, our stuff, plain and simple. We in the United States have been blessed with so, so much. Yes, you may have your various challenges in life. I get that. I really do. But if you are here listening to my voice, the sound of my voice, then you have at least one precious commodity going for you. Time. T-I-M-E. Time. As we are to be thankful for every breath, we also should thank the Lord for the gift of time. What we do with our many possessions and how we spend our precious time is James chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Then beginning with verse 7, the writer reveals to us the outcome, the result of being faithful to God with all we have. Verses 7 and 8. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. James 5, verses 7 and 8. The coming of the Lord is repeated here, so it must mean something, right? How would you define it? It is often interpreted as a point in time when Jesus returns to conduct the final judgment. While many, then and now, may see this as a fearful event. It is supposed to be a joyous one for the Christian. Perhaps you've heard me ask at the beginning of some of my messages, are you ready? Well, I would much prefer that you would be ready for the coming of the Lord at the end of God's message. There was a, a fellow I knew when I was doing mission work and he was involved with my uh, the church that I was part of and uh, his name was Larry. And Larry, an elderly gentleman, truly believe that Jesus would be, that he would be alive when Jesus would return. Now, he didn't just live in fear. He lived in joy, knowing that whether or not Jesus returned for him when he was still on this earth, that he would live for Jesus Christ no matter what. Larry's testimony is a testimony to me that as we wait for the Lord to return, we can have life of joy and fulfillment. Now, verses 7 and 8 must be read together with verses 1 through 6. James is issuing a grave caution to those who are so caught up in their stuff that they are forgetting about the Savior. There's a prevailing opinion among many that God the Son's return is imminent. It could happen at any moment, just as Larry believed. But since it does not happen immediately after Jesus' ascension to the right hand of God the Father, then there are also many who choose to go on living as they have been doing. Hey, Jesus did not return today, so there's no need to change anything. I don't need to straighten up until then, some might say. The key to James' passage here is found in the verb, strengthen your hearts. There's the call to be patient like the farmer waiting for the harvest. The action step, however, comes in what we do in the meantime. Another translation for strengthen is establish. Establish. It stems from the idea of creating a firm foundation as we are waiting for the Lord to come back for us. Well, for me anyway, if you're not sure, then we can talk about it. All right. As we wait for Jesus' return, we fix our foundation. 
We solidify our soul and we build our base. I'm out of alliterations, but you get the idea. Be patient, but be strong and ready too. I am ready, Pastor Glenn, maybe you say. You know, I'm so glad to hear you say that. It warms my soul that your soul is fully prepared to meet Jesus when he returns. James 5 verse 9, Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. James 5 verse 9. Now, after I read this, now I'm wondering if I'm ready to come face to face with my Lord. Other words for grumble include moaning and groaning, complaining and sighing. And it can be either kept to oneself or the moan and groan can be made known. Do you want to know what it literally means? Think of the expression caught between a rock and a hard place, a common American expression. To grumble is to be squeezed into a very tight space, being cramped, restricted, and limited. And then how do we react when we're in such a position? Uh, one time I was, uh, as some missionaries do, we go on vacation and we go vacation near where we are doing our mission work. So I took a visit to Thailand. I was in Northern Thailand and I was traveling from the North into the South on one of these overnight trains. And it was packed with people. We had these bunks, like two or three bunks in the train. Very cramped, a very simple bathroom for many people. And I, I don't know, maybe I grumbled then or maybe I didn't. But it's one of those times to be so cramped and tight and filled and restricted. that Some people are just like, they're sighing, they're complaining. That's a little bit about what grumbling is like. And like we had in the message a couple of weeks ago regarding harsh, harsh, coarse, hurtful speech. The grumbling does more damage to the grumbler than the um, grumble e to start a new word. Combining the past few messages, the negative speaker, the violent arguer, and the boxed-in complainer get hurt the most. Re watch the previous messages if you can. And it is this person who will be judged severely. That's why James adds the big not in front of the word grumble. Now, if you've listened to at least one of my messages, well, I'd like to thank God's messages, then you know that to me, context is very important in the passage in the scripture. There have been various ways of understanding James chapter 5, verse 12. Here it is. Above all, my beloved, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. Let your yes be yes and your no be no so that you may not fall under condemnation. Perhaps you know uh, James 5, verse 12. Perhaps you know this by another expression. My word is my bond. Gone are the days of the first century tradition of holding on to a sacred object and making a promise to someone. It gives this created thing some sort of totem pole status. Our faith in the now risen Christ it, our promises are made to and through him. While certain special items, a, a rosary, a shawl, a stone, uh, even an heirloom cross, while they can possess deep meaning, we who claim the name of Christian should be exactly the same without them, not putting our trust in any created thing. And again, just like the beginning of the chapter, James 5, we can get so caught up with stuff and I'll let you fill in that blank. We can be so absorbed with this created world that we can forget the creator of this world. Are you patient? Are you ready? Are you strong in your soul? That sounds a bit hard, doesn't it? But it becomes a whole lot easier if we are patient, ready, and strong together. Let's be prepared for the present future by living fully, completely, and lovingly starting today. Amen? Now, for those of you who know me a little bit, I can be both expressionless at times and even quiet. You can stop laughing now. My mom, my mother would regularly say to me, dear, you can smile, you know. I need to grumble less and I need to smile more because the blessings God has given me are beyond measure. Why? Our reading from the Psalms offers the best answer. Psalm 103 verses 8 through 11. The Lord is compassionate and merciful slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love 
toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. Psalm 103 verses 8 through 11. I don't need to give you any Hebrew or Greek explanation of this passage. It is what it is, and it says what it says. With all the changes going on in our world, our nation, our state, even our church, let us all make the commitment to grumble less in the present and smile more in the future. I know times may be tough. I am fully aware that many of you are in the midst of challenging situations. I get that. I really do. It's hard to listen to someone say, Hold your head up high when your heart is hanging down so low. But I cannot say to you the words of a former president, I feel your pain. I can't say I feel your pain because I'm not going through exactly what you're going through. But I can be with you in yours. Now for the smilers in the crowd in the church, you too can come alongside those who are struggling. After all, isn't that what the Church of Jesus Christ is all about? But know this, God is not angry with you. He is compassionate. God does not point his finger at you. He offers you his hand. God does not put you down. He wants to lift you up. He loves you more than you can think or imagine, past, present, and future. Do you love him back? Even in the hard times, especially in the hard times. You see, there's no end to this message. Today is only the beginning to a brighter future with Jesus Christ leading the way because he is the way. Jesus is the present future. Amen. My name is Glenn Shang, the pastor of Tabernacle United Methodist Church, also known as Irma Tabernacle. Irma Tabernacle is located at the corner of Seashore and Tabernacle Roads in Irma, New Jersey part of Blower Township, just on the northern edge of popular and scenic Cape May City at the bottom of the state. More information about our worship service times, ministry activities, uh, uh, mission opportunities available at our website, www.irmatabernacle.org. That's Irma, E-R-M-A, irmatabernacle.org. May God richly bless you this day and every day until the day of his return, the coming of the Lord. Are you ready? Goodbye and Amen.